Welcome to today's installment of the Somerset Business Success Strategies blog. The inspiration for today's post came while I was participating in Liz Strauss's blog on July the 3rd. She had a posting that day that she called The Pendulums, The Level, The Relationships, and Commerce. I'd like to read to you a portion of her posting that day. She said, after years in educational publishing, I began to see a pattern. The philosophy of the day would swing from open classroom and individualized instruction to high structure and rote learning. It would take about 10 years, then the pendulum would swing back again. Now she went on to talk a lot more about this whole phenomenon of the pendulum and the level and a lot of other examples. But it really got to me to thinking about something that I've been working on for a while. And so I responded back to her. And uh, I posted a comment on her blog that basically said uh, that I have seen this pendulum effect you know, everywhere in business. And, and one easy example is Wall Street. In the span of less than a decade, we've seen the dot-com bubble burst, we've seen the housing crisis, the subprime uh, debacle, we've seen all of these things. And we don't have to look too much further back to see many more examples. So I've really tried hard to be able to explain why some of the most intellectually intelligent people in the world will do such stupid things. Now the best case scenario I've been able to come up with if I want to give people the benefit of the doubt, and I do, is that you can really chalk this phenomenon up to a simple lack of respect for and study of history. And I think that that is largely the case. Now certainly some of these examples uh, of these business disasters are really caused by just pure, unadulterated greed. Now, I can't help people that are motivated by greed, but I believe that I've got some uh, uh, hope, some ideas for those of us who just make these mistakes honestly. We, you know, these basic business cycles that, that seem to repeat themselves in predictable patterns can be something that we can start to uh, be able to anticipate. And a lot of it has to do with a concept that I learned from Jack Welch when he uh, describes leadership attributes in his book, Winning. And one of the attributes that he talks about is the concept of vision. Now, when Jack Welch talks about vision, he really is talking about literally the ability to foresee the future, or in his words, to be able to see around corners. Now, seeing the future is made easier when we reference and understand the past. So at first blush, we might say, well, seeing the future is, is superhuman, but it really isn't. Now, maybe not all of us will have this capability of seeing the future, this vision, as Jack Walsh calls it, but we certainly won't know if we aren't actually looking. If we get caught up in the irrational exuberance of the day, we won't be able to find the truth because we won't be looking for it. We want to believe that the current business bubble de jour will not burst, even though this is not rational thought. We become too emotional and we lose sight of a basic common sense knowledge that, that says that if things seem to be too, too good to be true, they will not be sustainable over the long haul. And I love Jim Collins' story in Good to Great about Winston Churchill and his ministry of truth and how that really helped him avoid pendulums during the war effort because he had this cabinet level post that was separate and distinct from the military chain of command to give him the honest uh, unblemished truth about the war effort so that he could stay level and really make good decisions. We all need these ministries of truth in our lives and in our organizations. We need to surround ourselves with people that have the wisdom to look to the past, 
to assist them in foreseeing the future. We need to make sure that these same people also possess the strength of character to speak loud and clear and that they are determined and persistent enough to be heard. Now it's certainly true that common sense is not too common. But that said, there are people that possess this intangible talent and we need to seek them out and we need to make sure that they are a part of our inner circles in life and in business. And with that, I'd really like to ask you for your feedback. Do you have a ministry of truth? And or how do you stay level and avoid the pendulum effect? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.